The Passion of Our Lord is taken from the Four Gospels, Part 3, Trial and Denial. Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials bound Jesus and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas the one, was the one who had advised the Jews that it would be good for one man to die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus because this disciple was known to the high priest. He went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back, spoke to the girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. It was cold, and the servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing there with him, with them, warming himself. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus said, I have spoken openly to the world. I was taught in the synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus had said this, one of the officials nearby struck him in the face. Is that any way to answer the high priest, he demanded? If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, speak up about it. But if I spoke the truth, why did you hit me? Then Annas sent him, still bound, to Caiaphas, the high priest. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence of Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they could not find any. Many testified falsely about him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. They said, We heard him say, I will destroy this man-made temple and in three days build another not made by men. Yet even then their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave him no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses? He asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists, and said, Prophesy, who hit you? And the, guard, and the guards took him and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene Jesus, she said, but Peter denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and went out to the entryway just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, This fellow is one of them. Again, Peter denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, You are one of them. You speak as a Galilean. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him, I saw you with him in the olive grove. And Peter began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know this man that you're talking about. Immediately, the rooster crowed the second time. The Lord, who was nearby, turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin reached a decision. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. When Judas, who betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the thirty silver coins to the chief priests and elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us? They replied. That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went out and hung himself. The chief priest picked up the coins and said, It is against the law to put this into the treasury, since it is blood money. So they decided to use the money to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. 
That is why it has been called the field of blood to this very day. Then what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. They took the 30 silver coins, the price set on him by the people of Israel, and they used them to buy the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Here ends the reading. Thank you.